Thanks for joining us today. I'm Gabe Garish, owner of Backwoods Pursuit, and today we're looking at the best rifle bipod options here that you can select from. These are just a few of them, them on the market here today, but we're going to go over attachment options, whether that's a Picatinny rail or straight to your sling stud, and show you some of these differences here and how they attach to your rifle. Go over some of the height differences, uh, help you decide if you need uh, one of the lower heights or something a lot taller for sitting or standing. And just go over these functionality differences between these six bipods here. We've got six here we're going to show you in this video. So come along as we do that and go through these. As always, we really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and follow us on our Facebook and Instagram accounts. Check out our website, backwardspursuit.com as well. A ton of other gear reviews over there. Backcountry hunting gear reviews, optics and whatnot. Go check that out. I think you'll enjoy that. Links to all that down in the description. Come along as we jump into this rifle bipod review and going over these six options when you're selecting the right bipod for yourself. All right, folks, what we're going to do here for this video series, I'm going to go over some of the general basic information of all of these bipods here. And then following this video, we're going to put together an individual video on each of these bipods for you. That way this one doesn't get too long and we're able to go into more detail on each of these bipods, really show you how they function and operate on a more detailed level. All right, to start, let's look at the bipods we're going to be talking about today. This is the Spartan Precision Javelin Pro Hunt tack it has the tack legs on this one you can also get it in the pro hunt javelin which these are the javelin legs i'll show you how they function differently over here we've got the atlas psr bt 46-l17 here we have the swagger hunter 29 comes in a couple sizes there uh, back here we've got the harris this is the 1a2-btr if i get that correctly or b i'm sorry brm um, back here we've got the Magpul, and this is the Magpul that attaches via your sling stud. A quick detach there. And then here we've got the Magpul that attaches uh, through your Picatinny rail. It also comes in an M-lock and some other options. So those are the ones we're going to look at here today. So let's talk about the weights. One of the first things you're going to consider when you're selecting a bipod is, you know, obviously, what's my purpose? Do I do a lot of prone shooting? Uh, do I want something that's going to allow me to sit down and shoot or even stand up and shoot? Uh, there's Obviously, that's going to direct you to the, the path that you want to go. Or are you building an ultralight rifle where weight is ultimately what you're concerned about? So um, most of my shooting is going to be, if possible, I like to do prone shooting. Uh, that's obviously the most stable when you're in the field, but sometimes that's not an option. But most of these are... Uh, geared more towards prone shooting with the exception here of the swagger. This one gives you a ton of flexibility in doing either prone or some some sitting type shooting. So this one here is the Spartan Precision Javelin. Uh, with the Pro Hunt tack legs on here, it comes in at 7.6 ounces. Again, it's super lightweight. Uh, you have a little extra weight when you have the, the tack legs versus the javelin legs. The javelin legs bring it down to 6.3 ounces and that's for the seven to nine inch uh, model. It does come in a taller one as well, uh, but that's the shorter version again, because I, I like to set up my rifle to shoot prone whenever I can and use something else if I'm gonna be sitting or standing. Uh, but for these purposes, I like a, a prone setup and lower to the ground you can get the better. It's gonna be more stable. Obviously some situations don't allow you to do that. Now over here, the Atlas PSR, BT 46-L17. This one comes in at 13.6 ounces, a little bit heavier, but it has more uh, uh, functionality in some of the, the options you have, the way you can use it, and we'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but it's a little bit heavier, uh, and it comes in the f just over five inches up to just under 10, called 5.2 to uh, 9.6, I believe it is. Uh, so a, another great prone shooting and tons of options in the way you can set that up. Now this one here is the Swagger. And this one comes in at 25.8 ounces. It's by a long shot the heaviest of the group. Not really what you're looking for if you're going to be building an ultralight style rifle, but it also gives you by a long shot the most flexibility and usability for multiple functions. You, know, you can use it prone all the way up to sitting and a lot of functionality in between because of the flexible legs. We'll go over that in a minute here, but that's the weight there. 
Now this one here, the Harris 1A2 BRM, comes in at 11 ounces. It's just your basic tripod, doesn't cant or flex or whatnot, uh, but a nice lightweight option as well that's affordable. The Harris, I'm sorry, not the Harris, the Magpul over here, this is the QD version. It's a little bit heavier than the Picatinny rail option. This is a 13 ounces and it goes seven to 10 inches. So you get a little bit more height and the lowest height is a little bit taller as well. And then the Picatinny rail option comes in at uh, 11 ounces. So you save two ounces value of the Picatinny rail option. So all the way around, you got some great options of various weights there. Um, but depending on what you're doing, it's gonna narrow that down for you and give you the ability. So maybe your rifle doesn't even have a Picatinny rail. So that might put you out of some of these options here. So now the difference between this Harris and these other three here, uh, this is the Atlas, the PSR, the Magpul, both of the Magpuls and the Spartan Precision. They all give you the ability here to, to cant your rifle if you need to. Say you find yourself on that uneven situation where you're shooting side hill. Um, it's really critical to be able to count your rifle like that. So it's going to help you adjust to keep that level. It's really a critical thing when you're especially you're taking longer shots to have your rifle level. So all of them do that here. The Magpul here, back here, the Spartan Precision, they all have the ability and they all also have the ability to adjust how much tension you like uh, to have on that can. So you can turn this knob and it's a little bit easier or you can tighten it down and it's going to make it a little harder to to make that adjustment. Same with the Magpul here. You've got the adjustment here to change how much tension you want. Uh, you may want a lot or a little depending on your situation. And so they all give you that ability. The, the Spartan, Precision, Pre Spartan Precision here has a lever and you have the ability to adjust how that, how that works. So really a critical feature in my book to have that ability to, to an anti-cant ability built into your tripod. It just makes life so much easier out in the field. Now the Swagger is a little bit different than any of the other ones. You, you don't necessarily have an anti-cant uh, ball adjustment or anything here, but being that the legs are spring-loaded here, you can pull these guys out and then it really gives you the ability to, to pull these out here like that and you can you can adjust your rifle very easily that way to make sure that you are, are you're not canting your rifle unintentionally. Push a little button there and they go back in. So even when they're locked into place, they still have some flexibility here. You can spread those a little farther out if you need to or whatnot, but no matter how you're doing that, you have a little bit more flexibility to, to make sure you're not uh, tilting your rifle unintentionally, make sure that thing gets level for you. So that's some of the general information on these bipods. Now let's dive into the individual videos, go into a little more detail on each of these bipods. That way you can really see how they function and operate on a more detailed level. Thanks for watching here today and make sure you're subscribed here to the channel so you can catch each of the individual videos on these and all the upcoming content that we have. Thanks for watching here today. We'll see you next time.